Hi, my name is Raquel dugan Dibble. I'm the McHenry County Extension Agent. The cool wet summer of 2009 has created a lot of challenges for livestock and crop producers. Today I want to talk about some of those issues such as feeding moldy corn. As you can see from this sample, it's you know, high evidence of certain molds that have shown up in our corn. And today we'll discuss the differences between molds and mycotoxins. Moldy or musty feed is undesirable for a number of reasons. First of all, mold tends to reduce the palatability of feed. We can see instances where cattle even turn away from molded feed. As the palatability is reduced and intakes are reduced, we will tend to see uh, reductions in performance, either gain in feeder cattle or milk production in dairy cattle. Typically, digestibility with visible molds can be reduced by about 5%. That may be an understated amount if we get some quite severely musty moldy feed. Digestibility may be reduced 10% or even greater. In addition to less uh, palatability and less intake, we can also create some uh, health concerns such as uh, meiotic abortions where the spore load is uh, so high in the system that we end up aborting calves. It can also be an irritant which causes some respiratory disease or opens up the door for more other and additional respiratory infections. Not all moldy feed will contain mycotoxins, but that's probably our biggest concern is when some of the molds that are present produce a toxin in the feed which has more direct effects on animal performance and health. A lot of times when cattle get introduced to micro mycotoxins in their feed, some of the problems are a little slow to start up, but they accumulate and become worse over time. We can get to severe situations of animal death we can have diarrhea and hemorrhaging, or we can have estrogenic effects from some of our mold mycotoxins that re result in prolapse, and abortion, and other uh, reproductive failures. This past fall we had the condition of a lot of field corn with moistures well above 20 percent and we got a period of some uh, temperatures that were above 45 degrees and in that kind of environmental condition a lot of ear mold was favored in the crop out in the field. Various kinds of molds were present and we were seeing things of black sooty molds to white fuzzy molds to greenish colored molds to pink molds, red colored kernels, and so forth. These various uh, kinds and 
of molds are associated with different uh, potential mycotoxin production and different potential health hazards to animals. A lot of the common molds, such as this Cladiosporium, were probably mostly a surface mold living off some of the dead tissue on the plant and probably quite harmless and not associated with a lot of pro uh, production of mycotoxin. Some of the Fusarium ear molds, which are more characteristic of some of the red or pink or fluffy white uh, appearances, were associated with at least some vomitoxin production and probably some xerolinone and some other mycotoxins in small levels. It's not a very good indicator, uh, just visually, uh, how dangerous uh, a mold might be in feed. Uh, their, their appearance looks different from time to time, and their potential to produce mycotoxins varies with environmental conditions. These pictures here showing some molds as this Fusarium ear mold were provided or obtained from the South Dakota State University Plant Diagnostic Clinic. Gibberella uh, characteristically has the, the purple or pink uh, kernels on it, and it is commonly associated with some mycotoxin production. Ruminant animals are a bit unique in their ability to handle some of the, the molds and mycotoxins in their diet. Uh, some of these uh, chemicals or, or compounds are, are actually broken down, degraded in the rumen, and so they can tolerate at least some level, but the effects can be highly variable depending on the concentration in the feed and the kind and level of the mycotoxin present. We tend to have more problems in uh, cattle if they're under stress already from weather or health and also for high producing animals such as dairy cattle or feedlot cattle on finishing type rations. What we want to keep in mind here is uh, if there's some concern with the feed to obtain a test on it. Also we want to make sure if we're using some moldy feed in the ration that we've probably diluted it down with better feeds or given the animals a chance to at least waste or rummage through some if it's like forages and so forth. And then of course always observe these cattle closely. If we see some signs of lack of appetite, some diarrhea or some hemorrhaging, we certainly need to be concerned uh, and uh, take it out of the ration. One of the things with this corn is if we do ensile it or store it properly, we can probably uh, arrest the growth of further molds and, and hold levels at where they're at. If we do a poor job in storing some high moisture corn, if we had a test initially, we could have continued growth and mycotoxin levels or health effects could change over. So if you need to get a mycotoxin analysis on some moldy corn or moldy feed, you should be able to take a uh, couple quarts sample of the feed and send it into a lab. The NDSU Veterinary Toxo Toxicology Lab can be reached and it can be used as a, a means to test feed. Uh, it will cost you approximately $90 to do a mycotoxin screen. Uh, the feed, if it's wet, would probably have to be sent a, a direct uh, delivery type system overnight to do that. There's also a number of commercial labs such as Dairyland that also offer mycotoxin screening and analysis. It's been kind of encouraging from the tests that have been done on North Dakota corn samples this fall that there has been relatively low levels of mycotoxins present. There has been some level of vomitoxin, uh, some small trace levels of xerolinone, and a little bit of T2 and Fumosin in some of the feed. Generally these have been at only about a part per million well within the guidelines for feeding to cattle. That doesn't mean that every sample is safe and I still uh, suggest if you've got concerns to get your own feed tested. We know from some feeding trials in North Dakota that we can feed uh, a total ration level of five parts per million of vomitoxin without any deleterious effects in uh, gestating cows or feeder cattle. Uh, we also uh, know that some of these mycotoxins are cer certainly need to be restricted to even lower levels if the ration is going into poultry or swine.
If you are interested in additional information or have specific concerns about an analysis you've gotten or would like a feed tested and help in getting that tested, feel free to contact County Extension Agent or Raquel Dugan Dibble over at McHenry County Extension Agent at her number of 537 5405. Feel also free to call me. I'm John Duvitter, Area Livestock Specialist at the North Central Research Extension Center at 857 7682.